Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Laura's Stamp Pad. Time for a little bit of stamping therapy this morning. And I have a fabulous technique to share with you guys today. Um, this is using your alcohol inks on, um, on a piece of vellum for a fabulous stained glass technique. So this is one of those techniques that no two are going to come out the same. Um, and that it takes a little bit of like, I don't want to say practice. It's just sort of like finding what you like um, in in the look and everything. Good morning, Kathy. How are you? It is fabulous. The sun is shining today and I just feel so pumped. Like I am totally a weather girl and when the sun is shining, I feel like I can do a million things and everything is fabulous. And when it's rainy, I am just like womp womp. Um, so yeah, today is a good day. So I'm actually going to get started right off the bat by showing you guys this technique. Um, a couple things that I have here just as little like fun little sharing a tip. I have a mess of these um, like clear three ring binder um, sleeves and I put a lot of things in them like I have uh, recipes in them and uh, I put card packets in there and different things like that. So I took a piece of cardboard from my designer series paper and um, trimmed it down and then stuck it in here. So now I sort of have like a plastic um, protective hard surface. Um, and so then that way I can do things like spritzing or alcohol or watercolor or things like that on a hard surface um, to where like I can pick it up and move it out of the way um, or, you know, have like, you know, if I'm like showing it, um, I can pick it up without it like giving and things. So that's what I have as my base here. And then I just have a paper towel and a piece of vellum. So like, I don't know how well you guys can see that vellum. You've been eyeing this stamp set. This one here, the Heartfelt Wishes, which is super fabulous because it has that scrolly font that I super love. The other stamp set that we are going to be using is the Angels of Peace stamp set. Um, so I felt like this stained glass look went with the angel um, perfectly. I don't know. There's something about it that... Um, I don't know like it reminds me of church maybe because churches have stained glass and they have angels and stuff like that I I don't know what it is about it but it's um that one also <laughs> uh, but it just makes me feel like um like those two go together so that's the two that I chose so yeah you can kind of see the um the piece of vellum that I have this measures three and three quarters by five because I layered it on white that is four by five and a quarter, and then my card base is a five and a half by four and a quarter. So um, that was the size that I went with. I went with shades of blue. Um, I did do one uh, earlier that I did in like Bermuda Bay shades, and it was almost too light. So you definitely want to go like your darker colors um, with this sort of technique. Um, so for this one, I have Dark Night of Navy. I actually have the light Misty Moonlight because the dark um, Misty Moonlight was too close to Night of Navy in my opinion. And then I have Dark Balmy Blue. So I'm going to start with my darkest color first and I'm going to use the marker tip of the blends. And I'm just going to color swatches all over. And um, the best way to do this, like, fairly quickly is um, to lay the marker like flat almost like I mean I'm like very parallel with um, with this vellum so that you're using the um, like the side of the marker tip and you're not like smashing and ruining that um, that tip so just little swatches all over and now we're just going to come back in with another color and we technically want to like cover the entire piece of vellum so like you can like butt up against it and fill in of course we'll fill in our final one with that lightest color so like depending on how much of the light color you want 
you kind of need to like fill in quite a bit. Um, but this is also one of those that you can kind of go back in and pick, like go back in with the dark and go back in with the another light or, you know, something like that. Uh, there's, you know, no right or wrong way to do this. Okay, and then now my balmy blue. And you can also see that whenever you like lay it on its side like this, um, it's it goes faster. Like, you know, if you were using the marker or like the, the pen tip on the other side, you would be here all day going ear, 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 ear. Um, but doing this, you can just kind of swoop and swish around. So I'm just filling in. And you can see on some of the overlap, there's like some bleed, but that's okay. Okay, so this is what we have. Very awkward, very random. Doesn't really look like stained glass. It just kind of looks like a hot mess. Also, does Misty Moonlight super look purple, like a periwinkle here? I think it does. Um, and those dark splotches are actually like what's underneath um, here. So you can see it's really not like that except for that little splotch there. Okay, so now here comes the magic. I have one of the painter pens and I am using 91% alcohol. Um, you really want to use like 70 or above. Um, so that's what I'm using. I just poured it into um, my pen. Uh, a couple other things that you could do is um, rather than putting it in like the actual barrel of the pen, uh, you can always just have a cup of it and then dab into it. You can also use a paintbrush and dab into it. Um, and then I'm going to show you a couple other things after I show you this technique. Um, of other different ways that you can kind of uh, do it as well. So now with this, I find that you actually want to use quite a bit of that alcohol. So you want to be like, like you'll see it says push. Um, and if you push right there, then like it drips down into the pen. And now it's going to drip onto my finger. Um, so you kind of want to keep doing that with the alcohol so that you kind of get a uh, like, I mean, I can't really say a watery mess because one, it's alcohol, not water. And two, it doesn't really like puddle that much because it's alcohol and it evaporates pretty fast. Um, so using a, a fairly large amount or, you know, keep squeezing because it dries out. Uh, the other thing is rather than like brushing like we did with the pens, this time we kind of just want to like dab and pounce. So I'm gonna start with the darkest color. I'm gonna stick with one color and then wipe off the tip and then move to the next color as to not like muddy the waters. So I'm just gonna kind of like dab all around the edge of this. And like you can either like leave a hole in the middle um, that there's no dab or you can um, completely fill in. And like you can dab like lightly, like small little bits, or you can like really lay it down and um, and dab wide, if that makes sense. So like, you know, you can go like this or you can just like lightly touch it. And I can see that it's still quite wet, so I am continuing to go um, and not squeeze just yet. And this is also one of those techniques that is going to look kind of weird, but give it time. It's, um, it's a masterpiece. Okay, so I totally kind of see like a face, like eyes, nose, and a mouth. Does anybody else see that? <laughs> am I crazy? I probably am. That's okay. If you're just jumping on, welcome. Uh, I am doing, so now that I did that, I really like wiped off a lot of that alcohol. So I'm definitely going to squeeze now. And then we're moving on to uh, the next color. Um, but I am using alcohol on um, vellum with the Stampin' Blends. 
to kind of create a bit of a stained glass look. So I just squeezed a little bit more as I felt like it was getting like dry, if you will. Good morning, Pauline. Yes, um, I it's it's really hard to use with the um, the lower alcohol percentages. Um, it just doesn't it doesn't work the same because um, obviously the more alcohol, ninety one percent, means that there's less water in there, and you need that alcohol to um, counteract with the alcohol in the blends. Otherwise, we would be watercoloring, not doing alcohol. <laughs> so just going to clean that off, like I said, to kind of not sort of muddy the water. And now I'm going to go in and do that lightest color. I can like, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but I, I can hear the pounce, pounce, pounce. And I can't help but feel a little bit. Bob Rossi, <laughs> you know, as he's like a happy little cloud over here. So I have my happy little blue blobs. And we're going to squeeze a little bit more just to make sure that we're doing good. Okay. So there we have our all of our colors. I think I did all the colors quite well. And like this right here, I feel like is a little like, I wish I could super zoom or something. I hope it focuses and looks fabulous. So you can see like there's still some wet marks over here and over there, but otherwise it's pretty dry. So now you can kind of go in and play a little bit more. And there's a couple different techniques that you can do. Um, like I think I'm gonna kind of come in and, um, and finish the center of this to kind of blotch that out a little bit. I felt like those looked a little too like solid. A couple other things that you can do is you can spritz the alcohol. You can also like drip it. So like if I just add a couple random drops around, whoop, and I dripped over there. And now these are gonna kind of make it bleed. So you could leave it as is, but another thing that you can do is you can either get a straw um, to like pinpoint your, um, the air that you're gonna blow onto these drips, or you can just blow on it. So. And you can also just tilt it too. So like there's a lot of different ways. Like now you can see how I have these like extra little like drips and blobs like this one. Whoop, there goes the bottom. Um, this right here looks amazing. Um, I'm super loving that. You can also go back in with the marker and add more color. If you find that you, you know, need a little bit more color here and there, then, then you can most certainly do that. Um, another thing that I want to share with you guys, just because um, I love bling, is to take the Wink of Stella, and there's actually alcohol in the Wink of Stella marker, or pen, or whatever you want to call this. Um, so you can do that same thing, where you add drips, or you can flick it. Um, so one of the things, and like you could do that with this too, um, you can... Like if you squeeze and get like a drip towards the bottom, put your finger out and like hit it on that. And then it kind of like disperses that drip into like a, a spray a little bit more. So you can do that same thing with the, um, with the shimmer and the Wink of Stella. So like I'm gonna get a drip down there. I always find Wink of Stella to be, like, I call it safe glitter because it's definitely more safe than, uh, there we go, than powdered glitter, or at least in my opinion it is. 
Um, but I also find like you squeeze the pen and you're like, come on, come on, come on. And nothing happens. And then glob. Like who has had, who has had a glitter accident? Whether it be Wink of Stella or whether it be powdered glitter, who has had a glitter accident? I have had a powdered glitter accident and um, have kind of sworn off glitter, which is why I use safe glitter. And also, see, like now I feel like there's a whole mess of it in there. And I don't want the next person to end up with it globbing on them. But I'm also going to use it on um, my image. Have you guys ever watched Wink of Stella? Do you see how it dances until that alcohol evaporates? It is the coolest thing ever, in my opinion. But, like, it just dances like a little snow globe, like twirls and twinkles and everything else, and it's super fabulous. Now, some of you might be saying this looks like a hot mess, um, and some of it does kind of look like a hot mess, but one of the other things is, is once you put your image, like, over the top of some of it, it sort of masks, like, like this I feel like is a little too distinct, the center one here. Um, but once I put my image over part of it, only some of it's gonna show and it's not gonna look as, as crazy. I think there's, there's no huge drips to where I can kind of dry it like this now. See there, now it's dancing even more because that drip sort of moved to the side. I don't know, like, tell me I'm not crazy on the whole, like, dancing glitter thing. Right? No? And I hope I'm not the only one who's ever had a, um, how, how should we say it, a glitter sedent? <laughs> you know, kind of like a snack sedent is a snacking accident, so a gl glitter sedent. Maybe I'm just crazy. So let me show you a couple other ones. Here's this one. You can see I had a little bit of a glitter sedent here um, where it kind of ran to the side. But again, I think I'm going to put uh, my angel over here and you're only going to see part of it. Yes? Okay, good. I'm glad I am not alone with that. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> but here is another one. So there's a couple little splatters and then there's two giant glitter splotches and here's another one and then I'll show you I did this one in like Bermuda Bay and pool party and you can see that like those light colors just don't show up very well like they're too light like you can almost see like you know I have a splotch here and a splotch there but they're so light that you really can't see it very well. I think this would be really beautiful in like shades of pink or purple as well. Um, but yeah, I really like the blue too. I just find it to be so, I don't know, like crisp, elegant. I'm, I'm not sure the, the word I'm going for on how to describe that. So I am actually gonna set this aside while we get ready to assemble our card. Um, so that it can like fully dry and, you know, do its thing and everything. So, let's see. We have a Knight of Navy card base. And I'm just going to fold the card bases in half. Is everybody excited for Halloween? I feel like Halloween is like the, the first of the chaos. You know, it's like Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas. So it's like, oh my gosh, are we ready? Because there's no stopping after Halloween. <laughs> okay, so then I'm actually gonna go ahead. I can put this down um, next uh, because there's no stamping on it. So this is just a piece of Whisper White. And this is just a quarter inch in from um, the card base, and it is four by five and a quarter. And I actually cut two of these per card, 
so that I can put one on the inside and um, and write on that because after all, Night of Navy is quite dark um, and hard to see to write on. So that's why I'm gonna put a, a panel of Whisper White in there. Okay, so now we're waiting on the front to do our um, our shimmer, but let's go ahead and we'll stamp the insides. So do you guys want to see the actual card or should I show it at the end? Here's the actual card with that gorgeous angel on there and then the peace on earth. So I used the Angels of Peace stamp set. So I did peace on earth, goodwill toward men. And then on the inside I did blessings to you and yours this season and in the coming year. And then you can always, you know, stamp some of those. You can stamp an angel. Um, you can stamp any of those. So I'm going to do the blessings. Oh, this says sometimes angels are good people with kind hearts. So that's, this is the one I want. Oop, and I want this one too. So I'm just going to do this all in Night of Navy, one ink pad. I kind of like one ink pad um, cards just because then I don't have to get out a whole bunch of ink pads. Um, and I also find, um, find it a little bit easier. Like one ink pad is open. You don't have to worry about did I stamp that accidentally in the wrong color. And, um, and it just kind of eases the process a little bit. And then I'm going to take the little star and you could do the star like on the top and the bottom. You could do a little star here and here. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda like this whole like around the greeting thing. Uh, one of my stamp girls, shout out to Karen. I uh, did this in one of my classes and I absolutely fell in love. Okay, I'm also going to grab a scrap piece and um, and stamp that Goodwill Toward Men. And that I'm going to punch out. So... I have my images stamped. I'm gonna use my punch upside down. Ooh, it's like a sideways punch. Um, okay, let's do this one first. And I can line it up. So even if I stamp crooked, I can always punch crooked. Um, so that's the bonus of stamping first. I am gonna need to trim the paper around though. So there's our three greetings. Okay, oh, I still need the angel. So I'm gonna leave that ink pad open, although I'm a little nervous, especially since my desk is an absolute mess. If only you guys saw like the whole desk. Like, I mean, you can see it's quite messy right here, but there's just a mountain of stuff all around me. Um, one of the other things, you might be wondering why I didn't use that other stamp set and I kind of forgot um, because I did uh, this one. So I used all of the Angels of Peace on this card, um, but you could also use the Heartfelt Wishes um, and I stamped Merry Christmas and then I did From Our Family. So I did the Merry Chris Christmas From Our Family and I think um, that original might actually be like that. So I will show you the inside of that one. I kind of feel a little excited that I feel like, I mean, so whenever it was me, it was just me. And then, um, then Brad and I got married. So then it was kind of like, I don't know, like us, but like, we weren't really like a family, were we? Like, you're just two people. Um, and so then whenever we had Claire, I was like, I can now start using the greetings that say like from all of us or, um, you know, like from our family. It just, you know, it seems like then it was doable or whatever. 
Okay, let's see. I have this one in plastic, thank goodness, because it was just on an inked set. Oh, nope. So this one I said, blessings to you and yours. Um, but I, I thought one of these I did with the Merry Christmas, but apparently I didn't. Okay, so now it is time to adhere these down. So you guys know that vellum is sometimes very tricky to do because you can see the adhesive through it, but you also need something nice and strong to help hold um, this so that it's not, you know, curling or bending or anything. So Stampin' Up! has the Stampin' Seal Plus, and it works fabulously on vellum. And you can't see it, and it's awesome. So I will still say it's not really my favorite adhesive to use on the daily um, because I find it difficult. Uh, but I do pull it out every once in a while. So there I have that all pressed down. Even though it was all wrinkly, it's still pressed down really nice. So you can see that after a while, these kind of change as, whoa, I'm throwing it around. Um, after like they dry, then like the colors kind of meld differently. Um, so it's one of those things that you almost need to like stop, let it dry. I was gonna say cool. Um, we're not baking, Laura. Um, but let it dry and then see if you like it or not. Thanks, Kathy. I'm glad you like this card and thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. Why is this one a weird size? This is not, it's the correct size top and bottom, but it is not the correct size side to side. Whoops. Well, that's okay. It's just a little off. There's a little bit more of a white border. Okay, so then we have our Whisper White to stamp our angel. And I literally just measured the angel and then just went a little bit more um, to get this panel. Because I didn't want it to overshadow my entire, you know, cool background and everything. Um, so I really just wanted it to be just, just the angel. Like, not a lot of extra uh, white cardstock there. Okay, and then I actually layered her onto some balmy blue just to make it pop a little bit more. So here we have our balmy blue, and it's just a quarter inch um, bigger. So um, this is two and a quarter by four, and this is two and a half by four and a quarter. So if you're ever wondering like, well, I don't know what size to do on layering or, you know, this, that, or the other thing, um, just take your image and, hi, Karen, good morning. I'm glad you're loving it. Um, just take your image and, um, and base that off of that size. So like sometimes I literally just take the stamp. I'll show you guys what I do. I have my paper trimmer and I take the stamp let me get one that's cleaned off so that I'm not getting ink everywhere. So here's the little angel and I will take it and set her down here in the corner and I'll see that like a little bit on either side would be two inches. So from here to here and let's see, three is up here, three is almost too much. How about two inches by two and a quarter? or two and three quarters, I mean. And that's how I determine my layering piece. Um, so yeah, if you're ever wondering, like, you know, where do you get your measurements? Where do you, like, figure it out? Or, like, I just get so confused with that step. 
um, then just take your stamp and like if you want more white, like if you're maybe, um, you know, doing like a more subtle background where you want to cover more of the background, then make it bigger, two and a quarter by three. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, otherwise, if you're looking for like, you know, just a small, like just the focal point, um, then just measure your stuff like that. Good morning, Laura. I'm glad you guys are all loving this technique. Um, it's definitely one of those, like, so now that my I have extra white, I actually think I'm going to take my angel off a little bit and put her a little layered so that you can't really see that there's a little extra white on that one. Um, but yeah. It's one of those techniques that like everyone is going to turn out different and it's going to look kind of like crazy in a hot mess, but you just need to trust the process. And of course I was going to run out of adhesive when I'm like right at the end. And when you cover up part of that, like you can't see how, how crazy it is anymore. It just looks like a splash of blue coming out and around, and it looks fabulous. And then for these greetings, I actually popped it up on Dimensionals. I'm sure you guys aren't surprised there. Um, here we go. Little Alex is teething something fierce, although I don't know if I could really call him Little Alex because he is quite the beast. He is seven months and wearing 12-month clothes, so he's not really Little Alex. <laughs> um, but he is teething, and the poor kid, oh, I honestly think that he has four teeth coming in at the same time right now. He has had the two top front teeth coming in for like three weeks, and I have put my mouth or my finger in there and I felt it, and then the next day I don't feel it. So like it's either disappearing or I'm crazy or his gums are so swollen that it's coming down over that point that's, that's popping out. So poor kid. And then the, so he's got the bottom front too, and then the next ones are these ones like kind of on the side, um, and those, his gums are bulging so much. Like, I mean, it's like if you saw like this was his gum, then he would have like, you can see, you can see a bulge on either side like that. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, kid, I'm so sorry. And he just chews on stuff. And I mean, for the most part, he does really good. But uh, if anything, I would say he's just a little like clingier. Um so, yeah, and sleep might be slightly disturbed. Okay, so there we have that gorgeous card and the inside. Oh, here's the original. So you can see each one comes out completely different. This one, you can see I did those drips a lot. Um, I don't know why this one, the drip is like literally like cut in half. Um, but yeah, each one comes out completely different and, uh, and you just kind of have to go with that because no two are going to come out looking the same no matter how much you try. Like you could probably try to color in the exact same spots and it still uh, would come out differently each time. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I think I should be like somewhere into like the 70, 75 range of Christmas cards. So I'm super pumped about that. I will say um, I have a line. It's not focusing. Um, I do have a set of um, fall cards coming. So we're going to kind of switch gears a little bit and do some fall cards. Uh, and then we'll come back to Christmas. So while I feel like I'm super like nailing it with my Christmas cards and stuff and I only need like 75 more. Oh, like if I'm at 75, I'm like halfway, I think, which doesn't really sound as successful anymore <laughs> since I'm like a third of the way or two thirds of the way 
till I need to send them out. But um, but yeah, I feel pretty good about it. I'm not as like panicky, I don't think, or at least not right now. Um, although it's one of those things that like you think you're like ahead of schedule, so you like slack up a little bit, and then all of a sudden, boom, you're behind again. Um, so. It is what it is, but uh, but yeah, so we're gonna be switching gears and doing a little bit of fall stuff um, for the next couple of days or whatever. I, um, I'm i not sure what my schedule looks like for the rest of the week. I know I have a class on Thursday, so I'm not sure whether I'll be live uh, while Claire is at school because I'll be doing the class. And then um, Friday I'll be out of town uh, for a family um, funeral, so. Um, so yeah, I might be on tomorrow, um, and I might be on Thursday, but we'll just have to see. So I hope you guys, uh, enjoyed this technique today. I hope you try it out. If you do, let me know, send me what, uh, what you've created. I would love to see it. You can send me, um, a message here on Facebook, um, under like Laura Stamp Pad. So if you're rewatching this on YouTube, then go check me out on Facebook under Laura's Stamp Pad and you can always send me a message there. So I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Uh, don't forget that the free stamp set of the month is Sparkle of the Season and there's still time to get that with uh, a few more days this month. So yeah, have a wonderful day. Love, hugs, and prayers to all of you guys. Stay safe and stay healthy. I appreciate you guys so much. You're amazing. Have a wonderful day.